Hey, it's Jeff from Home Renovation. Welcome back. We're here trying uh, yet again for the third time to do our live show. So this time we're going to film a little mini video. Answer to a question. When I'm considering putting drainage on my house, do I consider doing the outside system or the inside system? What's the better option? The answer is this. They both work. They're both amazing. Okay. Your house foundation wall is made with a Portland cement mix. So having water moving through it or around it isn't going to hurt it. But to protect the inside of the space, the only thing is this, dollars and cents, okay? If you have a front porch, you can't excavate the ground necessary to put this waterproofing system in without removing it. If you have a deck, outdoor living space, patio, all of that has to be removed and reinstated. So think about the cost to do that because that is all gonna be part of the quote. If you, however, you wanna do it on, from the inside, then you are gonna have to run this trench all around the whole perimeter of the building Put on your waterproofing barrier, close it back up, and then you can finish your basement. If your basement's already finished, you might want to take a look at considering the outside option. But if your basement isn't finished, but your living space outside is finished, you might want to consider the inside option. If your house has got nothing on the outside and nothing on the inside, go with the outside option because it is marginally better. Okay? The reality is, French drain on the whole interior of your house, 15, 25, depending where you live, 1,000, it's, it's a safe assumption, but it'll protect your investment for life. On the outside, 15 to 25,000 to dig up and put it all back, all right? Yeah, it's a huge investment. The other thing is, is when they put all this back, they're not gonna compact your soil properly, so you got another year or two of fixing your drainage around your property line before you can go and finish your living space. So this is more convenient if, it, if it's empty, this will do a better job over the long haul. That's the answer to that question. There we go. Let's move on and answer some more questions. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna have to agree with you about the soil settling over time. Oh yeah. Because that's a really good point. Well, they don't pack it every foot and a half as they're going back up again, so. Yeah, I mean, from what I remember, when there was like patios and stuff, we would kind of just support it and then dig under it. Uh -huh. So we'd be walking under it the whole time. And well, that's sketchy. That's pretty sketchy. Yeah. Yeah. But that, yeah. that was the house with the everything yeah. caved in. But yeah, the guy that you worked for, he was kind of more like a, you know, labor's expendable kind of attitude. Yeah, yeah, eighteen year olds and minimum yep. wage. Yep, just glad to have a job and won't bother complaining to nobody about nothing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, question time. You uh, got buddy, to buddy just purchased a 1891 Victorian home. Nice. The basement carrying the main beam is a little saggy and cracked. How would you approach this? I'd call a structural engineer. Because you got two questions there. A, does the beam need to be replaced? Mm. Um, because it would fail. Or does it just need to be resupported? And then is the goal to fix the house sag or just to stabilize it and then work around that? Most situations, old homes, to fix the sag is a huge investment. So, I mean, it really comes down to you. But if it's just a question about the beam, the first thing you need to know is, is it safe? Is my house going to collapse? Right? Um, yeah, that's really the first question you got to vote. And a structural engineer can tell you. They can come in and take a look at that, and they'll be able to give you a professional advice and then give you solutions to fix that problem. Yes, sir. Uh, so Dan has a question. How would you frame over a basement perimeter drain with a cover? Uh, the cover prevents me from putting base plane up against the corner of the foundation. The cover to the drain. Keeps him from putting... I think he's trying to explain the concrete. I know what you're talking about, yeah. Over the so when you have this interior French drain system, I think, what is it, every 12 feet or something, they have to have a clean out? Nope. Nope, because we had it at the top of the slope. Top of the slope. Clean it out. So there is a clean out, though. Yeah. Okay, so it's not every 12 feet like venting waste. At least from what I remember from when I if did If you it. guys were even doing it right. If we did even, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, there is a vent cap there. So... Um, generally speaking, you have your foundation, your, you know, it's, it's poured here, and then they put a wall on it, and there's a few inches, and then they cut open the floor as close to that as they can, and they run this around. So yeah, if you're putting a 2x6 plate, you're probably intersecting that cap. What you can do is you can do it just like any other plumbing job, okay? You can actually um, notch out your 2x6 your plate, okay? Make room for that pipe. And then just extend the pipe so that it comes out of the floor and put a Y on it so it sticks out of the wall. All right? And then put a screw cap on it so that you still have access. That's really all you're looking for. 
You want to be able to throw an inspection camera in there somewhere down the road or do a little maintenance or some, maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe something gets in there and dies and you need to figure that know. out. You never really know. Yeah. So uh, having access to that is just that simple. All right. Don't try to build over it. Don't cut it down. Don't eliminate it. Just make sure you bring it back in the room with a, with a TY and you'll be fine. Uh... Wow, you're, you're so busy watching the explanations and learning. That yeah, I'm, I'm learning a lot to be honest. Uh, <laughs> how do you fire block with this air gap system? How do you fire block with the air gap system? Ah, <sighs> I guess he's talking about the wall, the interior wall, and the foundation wall. Yeah, well, the answer is you don't. Yeah, concrete's not too flammable. Yeah, there really isn't a um, a fire blocking requirement for an interior wall that's built in a basement. I, I don't know that being a part of any code anywhere. If I'm wrong about that, throw it in the comments. I'd love to hear otherwise. But um, fire blocking is really, a, it's the practice of eliminating the ability for a fire that would start an electrical fixture somewhere to have access to air. So when you build a wall cavity and you've got your light switch here, all right, and something weird happens, it starts a fire. Ah, fire needs oxygen, okay? So it's full of insulation. It can only grow so much. But in old houses, that cavity went right through to the roof, okay? Balloon construction, they'd scab on and put another one off of it. And so then there was endless supply of air. So fire blocking is basically above these fixtures, usually around the middle of the wall. They'd put a piece of flat wood there so that it limits the amount of air supply for a potential fire. But in a basement, I don't think it's an issue because you are building up against with a top plate into a floor. Yeah, you've already got your fire block kind of all built in there. All right, we got a guy named uh, here, DJ. He just bought a new home with a sump pump. Uh, can you use MLV as a vapor barrier? Uh, he's trying to build a, an in-home studio in the basement. <laughs> ah, nice. Mass loaded vinyl in the basement on the floor as a vapor barrier. Ah, <sighs> yes. There is nothing that There's would no keep you from here. using that. Really? The one question you're going to have is, do yourself a favor and, and, and overnight, put a plastic bag on your basement floor and tape it down. Okay? So separate the, um, the air from underneath the plastic bag and from above it. And what I'll, you'll find out is real quick, it's the paper bag test, a plastic bag test. If you lift up the plastic bag and you have uh, obvious moisture built up in that concrete, it means that the moisture is transferring from the stone or from the dirt through the concrete and it's not escaping to the air above it. So your relative humidity under your floor is higher than in the room. If you have a vapor barrier underneath your concrete floor already, you won't find any moisture because there is none happening. So you can definitely put the mass loaded vinyl. But if you put a vapor barrier on top of concrete that doesn't have one underneath, you're going to start trapping moisture under your floor. That'll ultimately get musty. So if you're doing a soundproof room, and you don't have that, I would suggest put in the dimpled membrane, the 5 eighths, then the mass loaded vinyl. That'll give you an air to the outside to transfer the moisture, get rid of it out of your house, and it'll still give you rock solid sound absorption, and that'd be the way I would go. Uh, how about buying a home, but the seller won't guarantee no code violations? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what if you're buying a house and the seller won't guarantee any code violations? Do a good thorough inspection. Yeah. Right? And tell them that they've got to be honest about the work that they've done there. Okay? Um, and then nickel and dime them a little bit. Uh, so what, what's the truth with cracks in the foundation wall then? They happen. Yeah, the truth. And they'll let water in. Because when I was in concrete, uh, <laughs> when, I, when I used to work for those foundation repair companies, yeah. we'd go door to door finding cracks in the foundation. Oh, saying, yeah, yeah. Like, if you it can, can see you know, it can flood tomorrow type of stuff. But Well, I mean, yeah, it's a little fear mongering. But the point is, if you have a crack in your foundation that's visible from the outside, it's visible from the inside. <clears throat> yep. There's no such thing as a crack in foundation that's just a surface crack, right? It's not aging. It's, it's all the way through. Um, it has to do with the foundation and the pore and the soil conditions at the time and all that sort of thing. Uh, it could have also to do with the quality of the concrete, how much water was in the mix. Um, you know, was it wrapped up way too tight, way too early? Did it have the ability to, you know, was it the right temperature outside? All these factors come into cracks. Now, most cracks can be fixed with an epoxy injection. That's not an issue. 
So before you renovate your house and finish your basement, make sure you do an inspection of your foundation. Um, and where do they usually show? Where the cracks usually happen? Cracks usually happen around windows, right? Yep. That's the weak spot. So uh, it's a good place to check. And if you bought a house that has a finished basement, uh, it may be worth it, you know, to do an exploratory holes and double check the next year. Yeah. Um, Better to know in advance than to find out later. And you'll find out later when you get a major water event, like a, one of these flash rain floods, right? That drops a few, six, eight, 10 inches of rain in an hour and a half. And, and none of these systems that the house has got are designed to handle that if you have a crack in your foundation. That water's coming in and you're gonna be ripping out your flooring and opening your walls and calling the insurance company. It can all be avoided if you know there's a crack there and you pay a few hundred bucks for someone to come in and do an injection. Two questions. Uh, should, you, uh, should you seal your vapor barrier to the concrete slab? And uh, is laminate a good idea in a basement? Okay, so two questions. Do you need to seal it mm -hmm. to the concrete slab? No. Don't get too crazy about this. We've seen this in the questions about uh, even my membrane question. They're like, do you caulk at the end? Do you seal it up? Do you tape one to the other? This is a mitigation issue, right? We're really dealing with minimizing the effect of relative humidity entering into the home, not rivers, okay? Um, so when you put down a vapor barrier, you actually eliminate the ability for that transfer of moisture to happen from one surface to the next, whether it be a solid surface or air. If you can get into the 90 percentile of efficiency or 95, you're going to be just fine because the water can be removed from your house in that situation faster than it can get in. And that is the goal. Uh, we got a fan that, uh, right below the Renovision. They're asking you to... I think you should just do that live. Am I supposed to say this? Yeah, try and say it. I don't know how to say this name. That's so much pressure. Uh, okay. All right. Man, no phonetics. All right. This is even better. We're going to have the just, whole world trying to figure this yeah, out. Yeah, let's just draw All it All right. Um, U-G-U-R, God help me, <laughs> V-I-G-I-T. My God, am I going blind? Maybe the right about that laser level hitting me in the eyeballs too often. Yeah. All right. Uh, am I going to have to take a crack at this? This is going to have a new segment. All right, look out, Jimmy Fallon. Here we come. I'm going to call your name out. Um, <laughs> man, I'm going to say it's Igor, and I'm going to say it's uh, Vigit. Just oh, guessing. Dad. No? It's a Y, not a V. So it's... This? Yeah, that laser level really I did know. hit you one time. I'm assuming... I, I, oh, that's an actual Y? It's an actual E. Oh, I, actually oh okay, so... There you go. Okay, Igor Yajit, I don't know. I'm going to go with that. Someone says Uger Igit. <laughs> There's going to be so many ways. Um, Ugor Igor, whatever your name is, please send it to us phonetically if you can. I'd love to know now. I'm kind of curious. All right, I'm back on topic. Back on basements, because it's all about basements. <laughs> Underfloor heating for a basement bedroom, yes or no? Underfloor heating every room in the house. Yes, 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 yes. With... Schluter, Anything Schluter Dietra. for tile, for wood, for vinyl, for I don't know, whatever you want, not carpet. Oh, second question is laminate okay for a basement? If you're controlling your moisture, no reason you can't use laminate. And on the flip side, if you're going to put in a, a system like that, why not just use vinyl? It's so much nicer. Uger says thank you. Uger? <laughs> I don't know how to say it. You're, we're all guessing still. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, cheers to Uger. Anyway, to tell if my sump pit is fed from exterior or interior drainage system or both. I know the answer to that. Okay, go ahead. Tough guy. Well, is there... Uh, I mean, you'd have to dig to find out. Because usually, uh, usually your exterior... There is one other way. What's that? Look for this pipe. Why? Because if it's an interior drain system, you are going to have a two-inch... Or one and a half? One and a half. Uh, Pipe sticking out, of the, sticking out of the concrete. Oh, yeah, it'll, yeah. Right? It'll have an access point. Uh, most homes have, um, at best, a couple of large three or four inch holes. And that's for like um, backflow preventer valves, access for the system as it leaves the street for clean out and all that kind of thing. 
But if your house has a little one and a half or two inch sitting all by itself up against the outside wall, it's an interior. The other thing you can tell is if you're looking at a raw basement, you'll see that the concrete's been cut and re-poured. All right, you'll actually have a trough mm -hmm. and it'll be visibly different. Mm -hmm. um, it's like really bad cosmetic surgery, it's obvious. <laughs> okay, remember it's not cosmetic and it's not a finished flooring. So all they're doing is putting it back so that people aren't stepping in dirt. So it's really the quality is of that Is hydraulic job. cement adequate to fixing foundation cracks? No, 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 no. Okay. No way. Right, so here's the question. So you got all this going on and you want to stick a patch on the inside of your wall, right? To fix a crack. Um, it'll be certain effectiveness for a certain period of time. It's not a long-term fix. It'll, it'll guarantee to fail. Oh, there's no access point. To his sump pump? The buddy that just asked that. Well, there you go. So it's part of the extra. I mean, he has a sump pump and a drainage system, so. A sump pump. A sump pump in a lot of cases isn't connected to anything. Do you, you have a pump and you have a, a vertical rise pipe coming out for expulsion? Any way to tell if my sump pump is fed from the... Yeah. Okay. Well, so, okay. Well, yeah. So the answer to that then, the sump pump, is reach your hand on the inside and feel around the inside of the shell of the sump pump. And See if, if you feel a hole, then there's something then there's feeding a pipe. it. For sure. But there's other kinds. There is a possibility that the pump is just put in place because there's a high water table underneath your house. All right. And so what they do is they open the floor and they put in this well with a pump in it. And so when the water table rises during a storm, then the pump turns on and keeps that water level from creating hydrostatic pressure on the concrete. And then when the storm's over, it'll go back down to normal. Okay. So that's another kind of pump option. Sometimes it's just a hole in the floor with a pump driving oh, the water. We got three minutes to go. Whoa! Any, rapid fire question. Any answer time. questions not related to basements? Go right ahead. I guess. Is that yeah? You're making the rules. Yeah. Well, that, All right. I mean, this is not a there lot of go. questions. <laughs> Ask any question you want about anything. I know it's been a challenging evening. It's oh, kind of hard to keep uh, the flow. Should you use the floor leveler around a basement floor drain with a pipe extension to straighten slope before flooring, tile and landing? You could, but honestly, it's a basement really want people to keep in mind that it's a basement. Floor drains are lower, they're in the, you know, on, on purpose. So you're, if you have a water vent, the water will leave. If you level out your house because you want a level floor and you think that that's proper, you've got it wrong. Floors are supposed to be sloped towards the drain. That's normal. If you change that and make your floor level, thinking you're doing good construction techniques, you're actually potentially causing greater damage to your house if you ever do have a flood. And it's not necessary. The slope that we're dealing with is usually over the whole basement, about three inches altogether. It's almost totally not noticeable, all right? So don't go through all the expense. And That's a lot of leveler, and that stuff's like 50 bucks a bag. You, mm. could, you could put 100 bags of leveler in a basement. For what? All right, well, uh, <laughs> yeah, two minutes. Okay, we're question free? No, I mean, we still got lots of questions. Well, ask questions, I'm gonna make a point. Um, if you are not following us on Instagram, I'm going to highly suggest you start following us. Uh, it is getting really awesome. We're actually starting to deliver pretty good Instagram. We are giving up to date behind the scenes, know the projects we're working on now, see what's coming down the road in the future, get engaged. I'm telling you right now that that is going to be a really good way for us. The more we grow that, the bigger audience we got on Instagram, the more people we can help. We got to get the Instagram murders to come convert over to the dark side on YouTube. <laughs> Max, we've got a question for you, man. Oh, really? What kind of LAV or lav mic is this? Eh, eh it plugs in. It plugs oh. in. It works. <laughs> it's, it's a an, Samsung mic? It's just an Amazon, Amazon mic. Yeah. Okay, right. Amazon, Amazon lav. We Very use, cool. We use a wireless for, you know, how-tos. but Yeah, how we do use wireless for how-tos. But, you know, hey, comment. Let us know, is this lav mic, is this working for you? Is this help the quality of the sound? We'd like to know. Mm. That feedback is good for us. Yeah, we changed recently. All right. One last quick one. One last question. One last, here we go. Last question. Are sump pumps for draining wall water? Uh, wall water? <laughs> no, sump pumps are designed yeah. for managing the amount of water underneath your floor and underneath your house. If you have water coming through your walls, you have a brand new problem. And that is going to wrap that all up. There we go. Thanks a lot for joining us today. Max is going to scurry on around the corner and push a button. 
and the video is going to stop at some point. We don't know when because it's very inconsistent. So I'm just going to keep on talking until we get a call from home and my wife says, hey, honey, you're off 